Welcome to day eight of Advent of Code 2024. Today, I got part one uh, in four minutes, part two in eight minutes for ranks of 106 and 147. Pretty proud of that. Uh, the recording of me solving the puzzles, unfortunately, has the microphone off. So you're just going to get silence when I'm solving the puzzles. Um, so let's start.
For part one, we're given a grid which has a bunch of antennas, and there are some dead spots, which are called antinodes, that we have to detect. An antinode is any spot that is collinear with two antennas of the same frequency. So, for example, these two A's are of the same frequency because they're both A's. We have to find the spots that are on either end that are the same distance away from one of the endpoints as one of the other endpoints. So, for example, if you have two A's over here like this, then the antinodes are on either end. Uh, they are collinear with the A's and they're the same distance apart from one of the endpoints as the other endpoint. So for part A, what I did was first parse the input. So we have to read in the grid. Uh, I wrote a couple of utility functions first. So get anti nodes takes in two coordinates, which are the row and the column, and then the output output the two endpoints as long as they're within the bounds of the grid. So I have this little function just to check for convenience if a point is within the bounds of the grid by checking that the row is between 0 and n and the column is also between 0 and n. I am not using m here. I'm only using a single n variable because the grid I assume is square. All of the grids I've seen in advent of code so far are square, so I think this is a reasonable assumption. To get the two points on either end, we calculate the difference between the two nodes, which is simply bx minus ax and bmi minus ay for the x and y difference, respectively. Um, to get either end, we do ax minus that difference and ay minus that difference. For example, if you have a and a over here, that's going to compute the point that's up here um, to the left. I think that's correct. And uh, the other point is on the other end. So instead of subtracting from a, we add to b. So we have bx plus the difference and by plus the difference. Now that we have both endpoints, we check that they're both inbounds using the function that we've already written. And if they are inbounds, then we yield them. How we count the endpoints is first we have to sort all of the different frequencies into respective buckets. So that's what all locks is. It takes in all of the locations of all of the antennas sorted by their type. Uh, I'm using a default dict of list. So basically every key is going to by default include, I uh, have an empty list as its value. And then as you add, um, it's going to automatically append to those lists. So we iterate through the entire grid. And if a grid location is not a period, then it's going to be an antenna and we add um, the location to the key, which is the character at that location. For part two, we have not just two endpoints, but all of the points along the line that are evenly spaced um, are valid as antinodes. So for example, if you have uh, a T and a T over here, then all of the points along that line, including the two Ts, which is something I didn't realize until halfway through solving it, are antinodes. So all integer multiples of one of the endpoints plus a distance is a valid antinode. Um, that's exactly what we do for part two. I realize I could have made this a little bit more concise maybe, but the idea is the same. We have the difference encoded as dx and dy, and I decided to make them actual variables to make the code a little bit more um, concise. And we just iterate in one direction for this first while loop. We set i to zero, being the zeroth integer multiple, and we start from ax, ay, and just keep subtracting dx and dy. Um, in the other direction, we start at bx, by, and we add dx, dy in the other direction. So starting i equals zero is going to make sure we count both antennas as antinodes um, which is something I missed uh, on my first pass. The rest of the code is exactly the same, and that's the utility of functional programming. You write a single function, get antinodes. In the first case, it returned just two values. Second case, it can return many different values. And also, this is where yield comes in helpful, um, handy, because you can just yield an arbitrary number of items, don't have to keep adding them to a list. And when you convert the function from a generator to a list over here, or rather, actually, I'm not converting it to a list. I'm just using it as an iterator. Same idea. Um, we eventually still get the list of antinodes and print the size of that set. And that's it for day eight. If you want to see my code, it's linked to in the description. I have a GitHub repository where I upload my code to all of the day's puzzles. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And I'll see you tomorrow for day nine.